So we hear a lot about AI these days and how AI can do everything. So is statistics still relevant with AI tools? I think more than ever, actually. Um, and I have two threads that I want to pull on to answer this question. One is you know, AI tools are really great at summarizing and, and synthesizing information for us, but I think they can, as we all know, they can be wrong a lot of the time as well, right? They're still, they're still only relying on frequency in the corpuses that they are crunching. And so to the extent that the, that is the correct answer, they'll produce it for you, but to the extent that that's not the correct answer, they won't. And so when we are asking questions that relate to statistics of these AI systems, we need to be able to have that intuition to be able to gut check whether the answers are correct or not so that we're not constantly being led astray. Yeah, I think that's, even if it did work perfectly every time, like we're seeing the tools get better, but even if it worked exactly like a calculator, I think you still would need to have some idea of what the calculator is doing before you start to use the tool for that purpose anyway. So like, even if we get past this, because we're, we're always hearing how AI is improving, I think that still doesn't fully eliminate the need for a, a gut check. Like, that, I think that's always going to be there. Yeah, absolutely, Aaron. You bring up uh, a really good point, which brings me to my second thing that I wanted to talk about, which is exactly the idea that having this statistics intuition will lend itself for when we don't have these tools available to us or when it's maybe awkward to use these tools, right? So, like, if I'm in an everyday environment, a coffee shop, I'm paying for something and I need to calculate the tip or I need to do some other thing that's going to rely on, on my math fundamentals, then I'll be able to do that in the moment without making it a clunky interaction. Or, you know, sometimes I might not have my phone or, or, uh, or a chat bot next to me that I can even ask these questions of. And so having that ability still is going to be relevant in our society in the interactions that we have with people on the day to day. In one minute or less, what are the core concepts that everyone needs to know about statistics? Yeah, this is a good question. I think it's actually not a ton of stuff, but I think if we know these few core things, they serve us really well in a lot of scenarios. And first one is the measure of center. So the mean or the median, right? How tightly distributed something is, where the, where the central point is. And that's always gonna be crucial when we're talking about summaries of really any kind of data. Um, Related to that is how spread out the data is, right? So the standard deviation, because in order to, to make sense of like where that central point is, we have to know what the group of data is that it exists within. That leads me to my third concept, which is outliers, right? Because they're, outliers is essentially, you know, data points that don't really fit the mold. And so knowing what data points don't fit in and are ultimately, um, you know, corrupting your data is going to be really important to make sense of the data patterns that you're looking at. And then finally, while not strictly statistics, but clearly like a, a helpful tool in combination with statistics, data visualization in general, being able to look at data, understand charts, graphs, make sense of that data um, as relates to the statistics that are being displayed in that data generally, but also um, just being able to understand really any picture of data and make sense of it is, I think, critical uh, for, for success for today. You can just encode so much information in a visual in a way that if you try to communicate that as a table full of numbers, your eyes are glazing over. Mm. But uh, making, it, making it visual then can make it digestible and actionable. That's exactly why I think data visualization is one of those core components that you need to be able to understand because it is the most accessible way to think about data. But there are a lot of pitfalls that can be fallen into when looking at charts and graphs when you're not maybe thinking about them as deeply as you should. And there can be ways in which the data gets skewed or misrepresented um, that can be very problematic if you're not thinking critically about the, what you're looking at. So there's practically unlimited depth you could get into with statistics. You know, what would you say to someone who is feeling kind of intimidated by all of this and like hearing that they should know this stuff, but not really knowing where to get started? That's a great question. Um, and I think when it comes to topics like statistics that, I mean, for all intents and purposes, really do pervade all of our lives and are continually being asked of us in our day jobs, even if those are not part of our or historically part of our core responsibilities, it can be very challenging or, or, or scary really to think about the, the full scope of things and try to have to understand them. But a few bits of advice I would offer to someone are one, you don't have to know everything, right? So I think 
there are experts exactly for this reason. There will be experts in your company that you can tap when you want to talk about p-values, when you want to talk about confidence intervals, when you want to talk about those things that you maybe have a little less understanding of. You know, rely on the experts. But I think that when it comes to those core fundamentals, a few of the things that we talked about, means, mean, means, medians, uh, standard deviations, you probably do have more of an understanding than you're maybe giving yourself credit for. So I think that's point number one. And point number two is, you know, focus on the basics. Um, like I said, you don't have to become an expert, but there are really a lot of resources out there for just refreshers on kind of core statistical components like the few things we just talked about. Um, for instance, the, the Udacity's business analytics nano degree is a really good primer on exactly these topics that situates them in, within business contexts that are going to be relevant for a lot of folks uh, in their day-to-day -day jobs, but that does so in an accessible way and in a way that kind of is more of a reminder of these concepts that you're already familiar with rather than, you know, having to understand esoteric topics that might be completely outside the realm of what you need to be doing.